here from Teacher's Brain. I want so if you're watching this, this will at least give you the concept. Even when I do first grade and second grade, it'll give you the concept of what a math cafe would look like. I like to keep all of my math manipulatives in one area. So you could either do a bookcase or my favorite thing to do is a cart that you can push because sometimes I like to take the kids outside to do their centers and have them for counters maybe use rocks or leaves or something like that but you could totally do a any kind of bookcase also so some of the bins that I like to use are these that have the little pockets in the front because you can easily take you can easily take the manipulatives and put them inside in order to share what's inside of them so they know how to clean up very easily and um, when I do the cart or this, I like to have a chart that is up where you can slip in what I like to call recipe cards. So this is one recipe card. It's called Roll and Cover the Caterpillar. So it tells you right here, this is the recipe, the name of it, and your, the child or children would go and find the serves, the serves one to four people. So a kid would come up and they would pick this and then they would go and find one to four people who would like to play the caterpillar with them and depending on how many they each would get their own roll and cover caterpillar worksheet i like to put mine in protective sleeves and use the dry erase markers over the top of them so that they can reuse i kind of like to go paperless so if you're like me you might want to get some of these sleeves i think i got them from lakeshore if not, you could do where they're just doing paper and you and you can have them turn it in if you'd like. But this tells them exactly what to get. So they would get this worksheet. They would get some pom-poms and they would have their pom-poms. And they would also get a dice. It tells them exactly what they need for their ingredients. And I like to use trays. Last year I had some pretty cool looking trays. Um, you could use anything. You could use these. You could use just a plastic bin if you wanted to. And um, have them put their dye in there, have them put their pom-poms in there, and then um, you could do two things. You could either have these cards separately inside of the chart like I told you, or one year I did where I stuck them in the back of the sleeve. So if they got the recipe card, they automatically got the worksheet with it. They didn't have to think about it too much. So then um, say that Johnny gets his stuff and he picks his partner or partners. Um, some of them only serve one person. So that means that they'd be doing the activity all by themselves. They can go anywhere in the classroom and the directions would tell them what to do. It says it on the recipe card and it says, this one says, roll the die, put that number of pom-poms on the caterpillar, write the number. Take turns if you're playing with a partner. So the student would roll the die and then they would take their pom-poms. I got six and it says in the directions, if you got six to roll again, because we're doing numbers one through five in this one, and I got a one, so I would take my one pom-pom out and I would cover it on the caterpillar like this and then I would write the number over here on the side so that's one activity I've got a ton of activities in there that you could do here let me show you a couple more um, this one is a race track now when you print these out they all they come in doubles so you can just cut them in half because you want to use more than one activity um, you could have four or five kids working on the same activity but in different areas so this one's a race track. It serves two people. And so someone would can get the, the recipe card, which would look like that. They would get the worksheet to go with it. They would get a pencil. And then, and I like to get some fun pencils too. Have some fun pencils that kids like. And a paper clip, if you can see that. Paper clip, and then also you would need some counters. So in here we can see there's some counters in here. Here's my counters. And it says, use a pencil and a paper clip to spin the number, okay? And the directions are also on here. Use a pencil and a paper clip to spin the number, spin it. Move to the number you landed on with your counter. So if I landed on three, I can land there. Take turns, and if you land on a flat tire, like this one, you would have to go all the way back and you lose a turn. You must land on a two at the finish line. That's another example. 
This is a fun one. This is called Bowling with Markers. So the student would come, they would get their bin, and they could fill up. They can see they need two pieces of paper for this. They would need the Bowling um, with Markers recording sheet. And on the back side, they would have Bowling with Markers. This is the sheet where they would actually put the markers on top of the circles and make it look like a little pyramid kind of. So they would come and get five markers. They would have them standing up like this. And then they would take a ball. I'm not sure if I have a ball over here. There you go. Well, you want to have a soft ball. <laughs> this one's a hard one, but you want to have a soft one. And they would roll and go bowling. All right, so they would take the markers and they would stick them and stand them straight up like this on a flat surface. You have to pull this out first. So they'd stand them up on a flat surface, roll the ball, see how many they knocked over and then record each roll. Roll one got knocked over two. If they wanted to, they could play with up to four people and just take turns rolling the ball and going bowling. So you've got a lot of different things that you could choose from inside this pack. I like to pull about five to eight different activities and switch them out every week. You have enough in this pack um, that could last a couple months. And, but of course the kids get bored with the same one. And you'll kind of, after the first week, you'll see which ones your class likes. They always, every class always ends up liking different, different kinds of activities. Um, here I'll show you one more. This one I have the recipe card on this side and it says, Trace Right Draw. So that's the title, the recipe, and then Trace Right Draws on the front here. They all say numbers one to five on it. And then it tells you to get the worksheet, a pencil, and five cubes. So you would get the worksheet, a pencil, five cubes, put it inside your bin. The kids would go somewhere in the room to play and then they would, um, they would take their cubes after they would trace say it's zero, 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 they draw nothing in there, one, 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 they draw one, and then they would show one cube on the side, same with two, three, four, and five. All right, this one's a simple one, but you've got lots of things to choose from in this. So um, that's about it. Um, other than that, inside the pack, let me show you this. You also get a set of posters, um, numbers one through 20, they all look like this. You also have another set of half posters, about half this size, that are sideways, and they're the touch one through nine with the touch math on it. And you also have some rules inside there. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but rules. This one says stay on task, respect others, clean up quietly, listen to others. These are generic, I put them in there, but there's also a blank one. If you want your kids to come up with their own rules to take ownership of, their math cafe, then you can do that too. Um, there's also a kindergarten math standards. So if you want to know what standards these are hitting, I like to do a lot of oral activities during calendar time. So I have some suggestions on what you would do to hit the oral part of the math numbers one through five, and then the rest of these check off for what you can find inside this packet. So I hope that explains to you how to use Math Cafe, no matter what grade level you are looking at. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know at cindy at teachersbrain.com. Thank you.